Welcome to Utah Valley University's Women's Volleyball. We're here in snowy Orem at UVU Shuri and Family Activity Center where the Wolverines are facing the Houghton Baptist University Huskies. Welcome to the campus of Utah Valley University, home of the Wolverines, where tonight the number one Wolverines are taking on the number two Huskies of Houston Baptist. Joining me tonight is Tyler Whitteson. My name is Steve Vale. Tonight's match is going to be dedicated to Lori Richards, who unfortunately passed away this last February due to breast cancer. Lori, who's greatly missed by this school, the program, and the existing head coach, Sam Atoa, meant a great deal to the players and, and everybody here involved at Utah Valley University. So we're excited to dedicate this match to her. The pregame show tonight is sponsored by Costa Vida. So to get us started, let's take a look at the standings right now in the Great West Conference. Utah Valley, as I mentioned, number one at 4-0 in conference. Houston Baptist right behind them with one loss. So tonight's match is gonna be a big one. Kind of a, a deciding factor to see who's going to hold on to that number one spot. So to get an idea of what uh, what we can look at tonight and who we can look to to perform, Tyler Whitteson's going to go over some of the key players for the Wolverines. And for Utah Valley, Kehlani Norris and Erica Nish are going to be huge for Utah Valley. Yeah, we're going to look to a to those two having a big performance tonight to help the Wolverines stay in that number one spot. So for Houston Baptist, let's get a look at a couple of key players that they brought into the gym tonight. Heather Lieberton and Katie Wagner are both players that Houston Baptist needs great results from. Utah Valley's being ranked first right now. They're going to be a tough team to be, especially at home, and these key players need to step up. And the keys to the game for Utah Valley is to control the net, have solid outside play, and have on-target passing. The outsides for Utah Valley, Lindsay and Kehlani need to step up and control the volleyball. And for Houston Baptist, they need to dominate the middle, more offense from Casey, and better server seat. Utah Valley is tough to beat at home. They're 16 and 0 at home currently. Yeah, they're on a hot streak for sure. Well, don't go away. We'll be right back with some exciting Wolverines volleyball here at Utah Valley University.
Welcome back to the Shurian Activity Center, home of the Utah Valley Wolverines. As we mentioned, Wolverines taking on the Huskies tonight from Houston Baptist, number one and number two in the conference, so this is a big one. We're gonna get a look here at the starters for both teams. For the Utah Valley Wolverines, Patty, ha uh, Patty Hatch is gonna be starting as the libero. Brooklyn Hall is the setter. Um, we're also gonna have uh, Kitty Fritzler and Erica Nish is the starting middles. Outside, we're gonna have Kaylani Norris, who we talked about a little bit in our pregame. And Lauren Stringham, I think I got that wrong. I think uh, Katie's playing up outside, and, and Lauren Stringham's gonna be the middle blocker. For the uh, Huskies, we have Haley, Haley Mueller, um, pardon me, not Haley, Victoria Weatherly as a setter, Katie Wegner as a middle blocker, Esther Longoria is playing Libro, Jas Jasmine Casey as an outside hitter, Madeline Gaffney as a middle blocker, Heather Leverton as an outside, and Bailey Keith as an outside. We're gonna be getting started here in just a second. I was gonna mention before the the song there that uh, I had spoken with the head coach, Trent Herman, in his first year as the head coach. Uh, he's having a pretty successful first year. He's number two in the Great West Conference, but uh, spoke to him and I said, so, you know, it's a pretty big one for you guys. What are your thoughts? What's your game plan? And he said, we're gonna try to play great volleyball. And I said, all right, well, uh, you know, don't talk my ear off, but uh, <laughs> so a man, a few words, but he's got a vision and he's on a mission. So we'll see if uh, if he can be true to his word and play some great volleyball tonight through his girls. So we'll see uh, what they bring to the table. Uh, and here are the starters for UV that we just mentioned, getting their uh, their chance at the spotlight, showing off their baseball skills as they. Throw those little mini volleyballs out into the stands. So they try to find the cutest boy out there to throw it to. And Erica Nish, actually, she's uh, the starting opposite. She's listed as a middle blocker. And she's the uh, only senior for Utah Valley this year. And she's been, you know, she came off a knee injury from last year and she kind of just got put into the opposite position. Uh, with not a ton of experience, and she's been performing very well for the Wolverines. Yeah, that's a, that's an exciting switch for her as a senior. I mean, she's six one, so she's going to be big out there, and she's done amazing things in the middle throughout her career. And, you know, the middle position is really rough on a player because they are constantly in motion, and they've got to be really fast. So if she's got a knee that's kind of giving her some trouble, um, it's not quite as fast paced out there as an opposite hitter. So that makes sense to me that they move her there and it sounds like she's been having success. So we're gonna get uh, get going here in just a sec. Brooklyn Hall's gonna get us started with the serve as soon as the referees check the lineups and make sure uh, everybody's where they're supposed to be. Give you guys at home uh, another second or two to grab some snacks <laughs> as we uh, as we get ready to roll here. Get those nachos. That's right. I was thinking Captain Crunch, but nachos is cool. <laughs> yeah, it depends. You know, <laughs> depends on what mood you're in. So Brooklyn Hall, ready to get us started. The outstanding setter here for Utah yeah, Valley. In her junior year, six feet tall. And already they get them in trouble with a nice serve. Yeah, and that's something, you know, Sam has been emphasizing in practice a ton is service location and putting uh, the opposing team out of, off, excuse me, out of system for the, you know, easier, making it easier for Utah Valley to play defense behind. Oh, yeah. It, uh, it's real tough for teams sometimes to, to be able to side out consistently when they are not in system. And in system just means they have a set play they want to run, and if the pass is there, every hitter has an assignment 
and it's it's really up to the setter to kind of run the play as a quarterback and decide, you know, who's going to get the ball. But when you serve tough enough and you get them out of system, basically that setter's oh, nice up there. Great dig and a great play there by Brooklyn Hall to get to that second ball. A little bit of a beach dig there. Oh, nice shot by Kalani Norris right down the line. Kalani getting started early, a nice swing there. She changes direction there on that swing, goes down the line and nobody home. Kalani back to serve now. Wow, another tough serve. Pretty, pretty nice pass there by the libero. Oh, and Utah Valley bails out the Huskies by netting on that ball that was hit long. It looked like Lindsay got it a little bit on their way down from that block. Utah Valley block hungry to get their first clamp. Yeah. And they go fishing into the net. Wow, another a nice tough serve there from the Huskies. Oh, uh, you know, that's something that, you know, we've been working on in practice, uh, Utah Valley's been working on in practice is when the pass is not, you know, great for the setter to feed it to the middle still, even though, even if it's a high ball, it's still, you know, feed it to the middle. And right, force that middle. Yeah, Brooklyn nicely did, nicely. Wow, that was a nice play, very well executed, but that ball just sails a little bit long for the Wolverines. Boy, Katie uh, Fritzler there with the dig made that look easy. Another tough serve, wow, they're bringing it too. And you know, it's funny, Sam actually mentioned that, you know, he noticed that the Huskies struggled passing a little bit, but he's like, you know what, we're we're guilty of it too. We we go in, uh, go in the funk a little bit and, and lose focus on our passing as well. And boy, that's a tough serve on both sides of the net. Ooh. And you know, you hate, hate when that happens in transition, when the setter able to read the game it's fast enough to just put it over right in the middle. Yeah, it's got to be tough point. for Brooklyn too because she tried that same play a couple plays ago and, yeah. and they ate it up easily. And then they got burned on it. There it is. Right, nicely done by Lindsay and Lauren, the outside in the middle. Yeah, nope. That was a nice close there. Hit her looking for a seam, but you might be able to see here the blockers close that up. There's nowhere for that hitter to go except straight back down on her own side. And they're saying the ball never cleared the net, so four contacts called on the Huskies. Well, guys and gals, I'd like to remind you to be sure to find us on Facebook. Just search for UVU TV and be sure to give us a like. Oh, wow, another nice block. Oh, caught in the net again. This time Brooklyn. You know, that's it's a bummer when that happens. If they're being You want to stay aggressive, but you want to stay out of the net as well. Well, especially when... Uh, Kehlani makes such a beautiful dig on that swing. That was a hard driven ball and she just set it like it was nothing. Oh. Hit her able to squeak that one past. Greasy off the block as they say. Jasmine Casey with a pretty nice serve of her own. Wow, great dig. Nicely done by Brooklyn. You know, I thought Lauren could have controlled that a little bit better. You know, putting it more straight up, she probably could have transitioned off and hit that. But luckily, Brooklyn's a little bit taller than most setters. And yeah, that was a smart play by her. And you know, it yeah. seemed like a lot of times she'll just try to dump that right in the middle, just kind of short in the middle. And I don't know if she saw it open out there, but she pushed that one deep when the setter had already released. And, and a great play by her. And a kill by Kehlani from Brooklyn. Kehlani finding the block, but just hammering the ball right through it. See there the soft block from UV setting up a kill here. Right. Kehlani. Nice transition play for Utah Valley. <laughs> yeah, what a one-step approach. 
Still got a little bit on that ball. Yeah, and Utah Valley is, you know, they're doing well controlling the volleyball right now. You know, that was one of the keys to this match was controlling, I guess, the net, but as well as the volleyball. Well, and they are. No, they're doing that too. They've had a couple of nice blocks early on in this first set. Go up 8-6. Eric Anish in a nice spot defensively on that ball, and seeing that out of bounds just lets it go. Patty Hatch back to serve. Wow, yeah. nice swing. Yeah, that was. I mean, Brooklyn and Lauren were both, you know, right in front of the hitter. There wasn't very many seams, and, you know, they just had this nice, Deep corner swing. Yeah, that was a great swing by. I believe that Heather. was Bailey Keith. He yeah, Heather or Bailey. Or no, my bad. That was uh, Heather Leverton. The 5'10 senior. Nice pass there by the Huskies. Oh, <laughs> Brooklyn showing it and yes. taking it away. Yeah, so that is something that, you know, uh, they've been working on in practice is, uh, if you watch this replay here, she goes straight up, but then she drops her hands at the last second and is able to just clap that hitter. That serve there, catching the top tape and basically falling off the table, bouncing the one inch line for the ace. Utah Valley goes up 12 to seven in this first set. Not quite as close as I thought it would be with a number one and number two, but we are in UVU's house and they've got a pretty sweet band up there. So we'll be back in a second, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with some more women's volleyball here at Utah Valley University. Welcome to Utah Valley University, home to an educational philosophy that engages its students in hands-on practical education. I invite you to learn more about one of Utah's largest, fastest growing, and most dynamic universities. I'm Sylvia Bentley, an anthropology student at UVU studying ancient Peru, and this is my classroom. At UVU, I'm graduating with a diploma and a resume. Welcome back to the Shurian Activity Center here at UVU. Utah Valley up in this first set, 12 to seven. Got on a nice little run. Both teams serving very tough early on, but Utah Valley just getting a few more to drop their way. And McKenna Tate back to serve. You know, her serve has been causing teams to get out of system all year long. Touch on the block there. Utah Valley getting another one. 13 to seven, almost doubling up the Huskies in this first set. Another nice swing there by Heather Leverton, outside hitter. You know, Heather's not real tall. Well, she's pretty average, I guess, for an outside. But she gets up there and she just hits deep corner. That's yeah. what she's been. She jumps well, on. and yeah, she's a smart hitter high off the hands. Brooklyn Hall back to serve. Oh, wow. Nice dig by Canate. Great little stab at that ball. Passed very well. Go, go. Ooh. Kehlani was right there, just couldn't quite make it. Go, go, gadget arm. Yeah, no <laughs> kidding, huh? <laughs> Heather with another kill. That puts her uh, four out of seven, just over 500. Oh, 
Oh, wow, nice dig. Looking for hands there and unable to find them. It's that high swing off the hands, but if you miss the hands, that ball goes a long ways out of bounds. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if Houston has much altitude, but, you know, <laughs> coming, coming to Orem, they're going to have <laughs> yeah. a little more altitude. I thought you were going to make a joke about Houston, we have a problem. And then <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, these guys are from Houston. I get it. <laughs> We can use that. A serve. We can use that one later. Yeah, I know. Yeah, don't <laughs> tell anybody, but I might throw that in a little bit later. <laughs> Another A serve for the Wolverines. Kehlani Norris. Oh, okay. Kehlani in the just middle. Gets that right over. <laughs> Towing that, that three meter line. Wow. And I'm sure most of you watching know the rule. The libero cannot set with her hands inside the three meter line and she <laughs> had one foot over but in the air just kind of hung there for a sec till she set it beautiful set great location and another uvu kill 17 to 9. this is what they call a shellacking oh another great dig by mckenna tate that ball was up on the plane so she can attack it Oh, oh. and you know, I thought that was a great set by Brooklyn. I, I like that she's trying to get that middle established when it's not a perfect pass. Yeah. You know, I think she fired it right in there. Katie just kind of. One on one. Yeah, just that one on one kind of got her. Nice pass. <laughs> that was almost. Uh, as if uh, Erica drew that blocker into the net, kind of a delayed swing, and the blocker just kept reaching, waiting for the ball to get there, and it never did, and pulled it right into the net. And draw the, drew the foul. The KG yeah. veteran <laughs> <laughs> drew the foul, that's right. No flopping on that one. <laughs> nice thought there by number 10, uh, Jasmine Casey, but that ball goes just long. 19 to 10. Another tough serve and another freebie uh, for UV. Nicely done by Lindsay to notice the overpass, get her feet there, and get a point for Utah Valley. Up yeah. 20 to 10 now, wow. Trent Herman, I'm sure, wanting to settle his girls down. At this point, this late in the first set, when you're trailing 10 to 20, I mean, uh, 25 is going to come in about a blink of an eye. So I, I'm sure what he's telling his girls at this point is, hey, let's just regain our composure. Let's settle down, take one play at a time. Let's try to regain some momentum as we go into the second set. Because, I mean, even if uh, UVU wins this, this first set, but they're able to pull back in just a little and, and go on a bit of a run, they'll still carry a little bit of that momentum going into that second set. So, And that is going to be huge for Houston Baptist if they want to come back on in this second set. Last time these two teams met, Utah Valley was down game three, 12 to eight, 12 to, or pardon me, 11 to 17. And Utah Valley was able to chip their way back and get a W. So wow. I'm sure Houston Baptist thinks they can do the same thing. And like you said, they got to get that momentum going to be carried over into this next set. Yeah, so far it has been all UVU in here. Oh, we got a touch there. That ball did go long, but somebody got a piece of it before it made its way out of bounds. Yeah, well, I thought it was an interesting call. I didn't see. Yeah, I didn't see the ball change trajectory or anything. But, uh, you know, when they're up like the way they are, I'm sure they're not going to argue too much about it. This is the kind of thing I'm talking about right here. Two plays in a row where they, uh, they're able to kind of chip back, as you say, uh, back into this set. So even, I mean, even if they don't pull it out, if they can start to establish their offense a little bit and put a little pressure on UV. Look at that, keeping Ooh. that ball alive. Yeah. <laughs> nice swing by Lauren Stringo. You know, Lauren, number 16, she's a freshman this year, and she's been a huge impact for the Wolverine offense. Coming in in the middle with 
some raw athleticism and able to kind of hit the ball straight down. Yeah, that was a great turn by her. Really just a one-on-one -on -one there at the net, but that other middle blocker fronted her perfectly. So she had to turn across her body to get that kill and nicely done by a freshman. 22 to 12, UV able to manufacture another real point. Erica Nish back to serve. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, I was going to say, uh, up ref, let it go, uh, but the down ref's like, no. Yeah, McKenna was right on that. I think uh, I, I think that she's athletic enough to get that almost yeah. every single time. It's just always got to be expecting it and always ready for it. Yeah, she was just a hair late on that one. Oh, oh, I thought she found the corner. Yeah, it looked in. But that was close. Tyler doing lines over there. He says uh, that's out of bounds. Uh, unfortunate for the Huskies, but uh, the Wolverines will take it. 23 to 13. Patty Hatch trying to push it to set point. That ball moved Excellent. around quite a bit. <laughs> No touch. Houston Baptist, you know, they're not hitting terrible. It doesn't seem like they're getting blocked a lot or they're hitting in the net. They're just a little bit too far out of bounds each time with the um, with, how, with how high they're hitting it. I was gonna, well, and it might just be a bit of an elevation issue for them. Coming from Houston all the way up to this elevation, the ball's going to float a little bit more. Hanging around, they score their 14th point. It is all or nothing at this point. Yeah, now in that last play, I know there's not a replay going, but Kehlani needs to stay down on that setter when the setter's back row. The setter's back row and she's jumping on her. When <laughs> yeah, that might be why Sam's up out of his chair. Yeah. <laughs> so probably want to tell her to pay attention a little bit. That ball hit well out of bounds. Oh, that's not how you want to go into the second set, serving that ball into the net. Wolverines scoring their 25th point. They're up one set to none. We'll be right back. Costa Vida, the coastal life. What do we love about it? The extreme, the unexpected, the original. The results are delicious, like the new sweet Baja shrimp tacos at Costa Vida. They're gnarly. Fully loaded with honey shrimp and mango salsa. And with cilantro, lime, rice, and beans, it's a full-on meal. So go big, get fresh. Escape to Costa Vida. Hi, my name is Tony. I'm a student with UVU Automotive, and this is my classroom. You can graduate with a diploma and a resume. Valley University. Your life, your beat, your university. Welcome back to the Shurian Activity Center. We're catching the tail end of a tribute to Lori Richards, who we mentioned passed away earlier this year from breast cancer. And again, the Wolverines are dedicating this match to her and her memory. On the court right now is her son, Andrew, and her sister and the athletic director, Mike Jacobson, who we're gonna sit down with here after this next set for a few minutes and talk a little bit about the WAC and what that means to the school. But uh, Lori and her memory here at, uh, at Utah Valley, 
She is greatly missed. An incredible human being. Still a little bit hard to talk about, Lori. She was an incredible person and uh, and one of my favorite people up here in the volleyball community in Utah. So we're going back into the match here. Set number two is about to begin. The Wolverines came out and absolutely dominated that first set. Uh, they hit for 250 and they held Houston to .053 which yeah. is not the best hitting percentage in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, I think Houston Baptist is going to come out with a little different uh, demeanor this next set. I don't think they were hitting terrible. They were just catching it long each time. So probably see a different HBU team coming this set. Yeah, Victoria Weatherly, the setter for Houston Baptist, uh, has the highest hitting percentage right now. She. Uh, she dumped the ball three times and got two kills, and so she's at 667. Next highest uh, percentage is Jasmine Casey, number 10, who's hitting 250, three kills on eight swings. It's not as if Houston Baptist didn't give themselves some opportunities. They had 38 attempts, where Utah Valley only had 32. It was just a matter of being able to convert on those swings, which they were unable to do. Uh, quite a lot of the time. Wow. <laughs> you mentioned how athletic <laughs> she is. Wow, she got up high. Lauren absolutely just bombing that ball yeah, straight and it, down. And it's very exciting for Utah Valley. Her being a freshman, I mean, the possibility of her, you know, getting better. I mean, obviously she's going to get better and she's going to continue to get better. Yeah. It's, it's very exciting for Utah as, Valley. As good as she is right now and she can only get better. Yeah, yeah that's so. fun. Another trickler over the net. Erica Nish with another ace serve. Ooh. Just found that ball found its way right in the seam. Yeah, Bailey Keith doing a nice job of splitting the block with that swing. One to two here early on in the second set. Remember, this is number one versus number two. Utah Valley coming in number oh. one in conference. Great dig there by the libero. Yeah, and I thought that was a great choice by Brooklyn. That was a really good set. It really distracted that number five for um, Houston Baptist, Katie, one of the key players, you know. Brooklyn is sometimes gets systematical, but once in a while she'll uh, actually a lot recently she's been a lot better about being deceptive with who she's setting. Yeah. Uh, creating a one-on-one -on -one situation for the hitter blocker. Right, and that's half of it. I mean, you've got to have good location, good pace, good tempo, all that kind of stuff. But we talked about her kind of being the quarterback of the team, and she's got to be able to, to look off, you know, the defense a little bit. Yeah. Nice high swing, but handled well there. Kehlani okay, making a nice dig. Utah Valley. Scoring their third point, tying it up three apiece. Patty Hatch back to serve from Las Vegas, Nevada. Vegas, baby. <laughs> nice serve. Forcing that ball outside. Oh. Say nice tool on that one when it uh, gets blocked straight down about two inches out of bounds. Oh, <laughs> Great tool. <laughs> Nice short serve, oh. handled easily. Wow, there's a hammer. Yeah, nicely done by Kayolani. I think that that setter for Houston Baptist, uh, Victoria, I think she probably misread that. I think if she would have just lined herself up a little more inside the antenna, she probably would have got yeah. Kalani on that one. Yeah, it was this she ran right by her, huh? Yeah. Another smart swing. Heather Leverton high off the block. And she's got some locks on her. I haven't seen hair that long in a while. <laughs> she does. Like Jane Seymour. That's way too old for you. You have no idea who I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> a nice transition play by HBU, but just a little long. Again, a little long, you know. And count how many times that happens. It's. It's unfortunate, I mean, that's giving Utah Valley points. 
each yeah. time. And then they're just missing too. I mean, these are nice, smart, deep swings, but they're just missing. They're probably in at their gym at home. Nice high swing. Touched by Utah Valley. Okay, Ronnie. Yeah, this was a good move by her. Bailey Keith back into the match. Nice stab there. Oh, a oh. little miscommunication. <laughs> That's, you know, one thing Utah Valley, in my opinion, they struggle with sometimes. It only happens, you know, maybe three or four times an entire match, maybe even two times, but get mixed up, no, don't don't know who's setting, and next thing you know. They're both trying to set yeah, the same ball. Two or three people <laughs> setting the same ball. The true double contact. Nice pass. That was a low set, kind of trapped her middle blocker there a little bit, hitting into the great wall and uh, paid the price for it. She sets that ball another foot higher. She's going to have a chance to kind of move that ball around. Yeah. Kind of lucky for Erica there. I don't know what happened there. That was weird. Trickling right down the block. Looked like the blocker was all over that. Maybe she was a little early and on her way down or something. But uh, yeah, Erica getting away with that one. Kaylani Norris back to serve. Wow. And that was really nice by Madeline Gaffney. Yeah, Madeline and Victoria. I mean, the set or the pass took Victoria pretty far into the outside hitter region, and she was able still to still deliver to the middle. <laughs> oh, Erica Nish, man, detonating out there as an opposite. It's kind of a tough ball to hit coming all the way across your body, the timing and everything, but she's adapting very well and just put the hurt on that ball. What you call hitting a heavy ball. Yeah. Or an angry ball. Oh, wow, look at her hang. Okay, with an excellent dig. Oh, and that ball sprayed wide and out of bounds. You know, I think that's like the third hit that's gone long for HBU to just this set, you know, the second or third. But another, the same, exact same play to the middle. I like that. It was a good set by Victoria. Just <laughs> Katie just lift that ball. That was a sweet dig by Utah Valley. Unable to duplicate on that swing. Katie Winger back into the match. Excellent swing by Erica. Well, if you can't hit it in, just hit it at him. Yeah. Right there, that's a very deep high swing. Almost off the, the noggin of the uh, defensive specialist there. Utah Valley pulling within two, down a little bit, 9-11 in the second set. Oh, what a great dig. Yeah, that's one area Utah Valley kind of, you know, they defensively struggle with is when the ball is hit off the block and it goes deep. Yeah, Ke uh, Kehlani was in way too shallow. Yeah, it tends to position. happen sometimes, yeah. but usually pretty good about getting it. And it's it's tough, and that was a position I played, and a lot of times in, during a long rally, you kind of tend to suck in a little bit and, and want to get in there, but then you, you miss that opportunity. I don't know if that ball is going to cross anyway, but uh, nice block there yeah. from the Huskies. The Huskies giving Utah Valley a little run right now. Yeah, up four in the second set. And now it's their turn to make UV struggle a little bit on serve receive. Sam will take a timeout. Yeah, Sam not liking what he sees, wants to take a sec to talk about it. So we'll step aside. You go find yourself some more nachos or Captain Crunch and meet us back here in about 60 <laughs> seconds. <laughs>
Utah Valley University. Your life, your beat, your university. Welcome back to the Shurian Activity Center, Utah Valley University. Wolverines taking on the Huskies of Houston Baptist. Number one and number two in their conference, the Great West Conference. Game two, Huskies are up 14 to nine. Got in Utah Valley a little bit of trouble in this second set. Oh, the kill by Lauren. You know, I, I thought that set was a little predictable by Brooklyn, but. Yeah, tight, tight set too. A little bit of a trap set, but uh, Lauren doing a nice job of hanging in the air and tooling that block out of bounds. Excellent serve by Patty. Oh, Ooh, that looked Lauren. like a lift, but yeah, a huge block there by the Wolverines. Lauren just is so, just reaches her arm so far over the net when she's blocking. It just makes it so hard for the opposing team to spike against her. Yeah, for real. And that's a good, uh, a good example of what we mean by out of system. When it's a, uh, oh, nice dump there, just, just outside the reach of, of Lauren. When you serve that tough, they cannot run their pre-designed play. Nice tool out of bounds. And so they have to just force that ball to the outside. Utah Valley, they were camped out there waiting for it and just blocked it straight down. So the more you can make your opponent do that, obviously the better off you're gonna be. Yeah. Oh, unable to control that one. See if Huskies Sam. go up 16-11. Utah Valley needs to figure some things out here, or we're definitely going to go at least four games, and oh, that's yeah. not going to help. Yeah, Sam's looking at a sub. Looks yeah. like <laughs> Bailey Ferris is coming in from Oregon, Utah. My guess is she's going for Kaylani. Yep. Yeah, Kaylani's going to take a second to get her head right. Yeah. They, uh, sometimes you uh, you get in a little funk. Call it going in the tank, where you just kind of. Go into, oh, nice swing on the outside. Look at that go right to her, and she gets her first kill. Yeah, Bailey is really good about that, coming off the bench and still able to produce. Sometimes when you go off the bench, you know, it's hard to oh, yeah. produce serves, kills, digs, because you're not in the, in the game. Yeah, there's no adrenaline. You're ice cold. At least she had her, her warm-ups on, so maybe that helped a little. Yeah. Oh, nice stab nice by, by Patty. Patty. Oh. There's a big seam in that block. Yeah, Patty able she to get there. It. Oh, oh. Just out. that was a great thought by Patty, but uh, Huskies were not fooled. That ball was just barely wide and, and deep. Okay, back to serve for HBU. Oh boy. Oh, look at that up from Brooklyn. Brought that back from the other side of underneath the net. Let's see if Utah Valley can. Get a nice convert. There and it is. Pull it off. Another long shot miss by HBU. But when you got a lead, you can take those kind of risks. Yeah, but I mean, that's been a very consistent thing with them tonight. You know, lots of their swings are going just long. Yeah, UV needs to regroup right here and, and serve tough and put some pressure back on uh, HBU, but unable to do it. Another nice swing there. It looked like Erica was in a good spot. Just tilled her hand and just kind of hit it in a funky way. Hey, all right. <laughs> Nicely done by Erica. As a coach, boy, that's just about the toughest thing in the world to watch happen. Nice, high, soft block. Exactly what you want out of your blockers, if not a straight down block. And nobody on the defensive end to, to pick it up. Done by Lindsay. Yeah, one on one. Oh. oh. <laughs> it's a ball that I think Katie can put oh. away. Nice swing by Erica. Katie covering her own block. <laughs> she got blocked and covered it herself. And then Erica, deep corner. She's like, I'm tired. I'm done with this point. 
And they bail out the Huskies who score their 20th point on a long serve from Utah Valley. Just long. Utah Valley giving uh, the Huskies a little bit of, of the break they've been giving them, and they go along that time. 15 to 21, again, Samatoa taking his last time out to uh, try to slow things down a little bit. The wheels have somewhat come off in this second set. And uh, you can see the stern look in his eyes. Look, we're way better than this. Let's start playing like it again. Get yeah. a look at the Green Men group. These guys are awesome. They're uh, directly across from us. They've been a lot of fun to watch. They're uh, they're pretty good at what they do. Yeah. You know, this is the first match that Utah Valley has had a band, so it's a lot of fun to get a band in here and uh, make some noise happen. And folks, I want to remind you, you can watch the game live online as well at uvu.edu forward slash uvu tv again that's uvu.edu forward slash uvu tv we talked about this match being uh, dedicated to Lori richards and uh the pink for a purpose proceeds from this match are uh are being raised and will go towards the Lori richards memorial scholarship fund the fund has been set up in her name for scholarships, pretty exciting stuff. Yeah, it is, you know, it's nice to keep Lori's name alive at this school for for all the things that she's done, for you know, everyone that she's touched. So. Yeah, and it's, it's been a lot of lives over <laughs> a lot of decades. She was an amazing coach, teacher, mom, person, friend. She was awesome. Utah Valley trying to claw their way back into this one, 16-21. Wow, nice swing on the outside. Utah oh. Valley just trying to keep it in play. That was really fast. That was a nice set by Victoria to Madeline, excuse me. And it was fast. I mean, that, Lauren had a hard time with that one with how fast the offense was defensively. Yeah, it looks like, uh, looks like the Huskies have settled in a little bit. Started playing their kind of volleyball. Wow. And that's Erica's kind of volleyball right there. Yeah, I'd say Erica is one of the better setter, or pardon me, servers for Utah Valley. Let's see if she can get a run going. Look at that, right pass, a double block. Deep into the angle. Nice hard cross court kill. Oh yeah. no. <laughs> Oldest trick of the book. Yeah, nice aggressiveness by by Lindsay, but it's caught the Yeah, you could tell it, she wanted to down. not just give it back to him, but put something on it, but it was so tight to the net, she uh, followed through and netted. 23-17. Wolverines running out of road. Boom, <laughs> what a dig. Oh, Lord. There's a freshman mistake right there. Yeah, you know, that's the things that she's going to get better at. Just those little things, her awareness on the floor, what's happening as the play develops. And Heather Leverton with an awesome dig in that play. Wow, big swing yeah, HB on the U. outside. And that's it, 25-17, the second set. We are all knotted up at one apiece. We'll be back in a moment with more women's volleyball right here at UVU University. As a healthcare leader, I rely on Utah Valley University graduates to help our company provide quality healthcare for the region. Many of the nurses graduating from UVU go on to work in our hospitals and clinics. They are superbly trained and are excellent employees who tend to stay in the area and remain employed with us for years. This is just one example of how UVU is serving the economic development needs of the region and the state. Stop by the campus to see for yourself. Utah Valley University, it's your university. Welcome to Utah Valley University, home to an educational philosophy that engages its students in hands-on practical education.
I invite you to learn more about one of Utah's largest, fastest growing, and most dynamic universities. Dawn is breaking at Utah Valley University. 33,000 students are descending on campus. What are they after? Knowledge? Opportunity? They might be pursuing an MBA, an automotive certificate, or a bachelor's degree in philosophy. But despite their different paths, they share a common understanding. I'm Patty Garcia, a geology student at UVU, and this is Engaged Learning. At UVU, I'm learning by doing. Welcome back to the Shurian Activity Center on the campus of Utah Valley University, where Utah Valley is taking on the Huskies of Houston Baptist. Utah Valley jumped out and won the first set uh, very easily. Um, and then, I don't know if they fell asleep at the wheel or if the Huskies finally woke up, but the Huskies taking the second set 17 to 25. We'll be starting our third set soon. But uh, we, are, we are joined now by Mike Jacobson, who uh, is going to tell us a little bit about uh, Utah Valley's uh, invitation to the WAC and the excitement that that brings to the school. Mike, thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for the opportunity. You know, it, um, it really is a great thing for our, uh, for our university, for our student athletes, and for our community at large to be a part of a conference as uh, well recognized as the Western Athletic Conference. It has a great brand nationally and especially a great uh, brand and recognition in the state of Utah with uh, the footprint that BYU and Utah and most recently Utah State has put there. And uh, our hope is that we can just kind of follow in their footsteps and continue to represent uh, the state in a very positive way. And uh, our hope is and that we'll be very competitive in the WAC. So, so tell me, and, and the listeners at home, when uh, when will UVU begin competing in It'll, the conference? Yeah, it's really not that far away. It'll be uh, July 1st, 2013. And so just as soon as we get through this academic year, we'll be up and running with them. Oh, wow. So that is soon. Boy, yeah. that's just around the corner. So what kind of opportunities is this going to open up to uh, some of the players that are either here now or, uh, or the ones that might be looking to come to this school here in the future? Yeah, I think it's going to do a little bit of both, but uh, but really it's going to open up opportunities for uh, uh, it, our recruiting with our coaches and the caliber and uh, of talent that we'll be able to recruit now into the WAC. And so uh, that's an exciting time. We've uh, I know we've lost some players that we've been uh, talking to about a conference, and when it, the WAC didn't happen earlier, we lost them. We're, uh, another year we'll be able to get those. So I think uh, the recruiting with all of our programs will definitely go up and and uh, the caliber of athlete that wants to come here will be higher than what it's been in the past. I guarantee it. Yeah, I, yeah thank you. Those are great comments. And again, a very exciting time for, uh, for a school that deserves it. I mean, Utah Valley has been growing up, what was it, Utah Tech to Utah Valley Community College to Utah Valley State College and now Utah Valley University. You so got those all down pretty good. Yeah, well, I've been good. here a little while. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to take a quick look at some of the highlights from the press conference where uh, Utah Valley was invited into the WAC. So let's check it out. I'm pleased to announce that Utah Valley University has accepted an invitation to join the Western Athletic Conference. But as of July 1st, we will be full active participating, competing members of the WAC. It will be fierce, and it will be one of the ideals of high sportsmanship. We really do believe the true heroes in this are the student athletes. You're recruited and you've come to Utah Valley University to be a Wolverine and to wear green and be proud of who you are. For their belief and the vision of what UVU could be, for their relentless hard work to prepare themselves for this opportunity. 
On behalf of the Western Athletic Conference, welcome to the WAC. And exciting times for a school that's been uh, looking to make this move probably for a while. That's a very well-known conference and some really big schools in it. So and we talked a little bit about uh, the exciting times as far as the students that are here now and students that might be looking to come. Any other personal thoughts on this, uh, on this great achievement from this school? Well, I think it's just a culmination of so much that's been going on lately. And... You know, with, with our school, being the largest school in, in the state, uh, getting university status and becoming full NCAA eligible, and now in just such a short period of time to be able to uh, be a member of a conference that has the recognition and the brand that the WAC has is just a great opportunity for everyone. I, I couldn't agree more. And Mike, thanks so much for stopping by for a moment to talk to us. Congratulations Thank on you. uh, your invitation to the WAC, and, and the best of luck to the Utah University. Or Utah Valley University. Sorry. Thanks, Mike. Dawn is breaking at Utah Valley University. 33,000 students are descending on campus. What are they after? Knowledge? Opportunity? They might be pursuing an MBA, an automotive certificate, or a bachelor's degree in philosophy. But despite their different paths, they share a common understanding. Dr. John is a real UVU professor, not an actor. So to tell his story, we hired a UVU student. Knowledge-based edification increases executive functioning in the frontal lobes. Yo, dude, UVU is more than an education. It's a life experience. UVU facilitates the discovery of your personal Weltanschauung. What? Dude, you don't know everything yet. Utah Valley University. It's your university. Coastal life. What do we love about it? The extreme, the unexpected, the original. The results are delicious, like the new sweet Baja shrimp tacos at Costa Vida. They're gnarly, fully loaded with honey shrimp and mango salsa. And with cilantro, lime, rice, and beans, it's a full on meal. So go big, get fresh. Escape to Costa Vida. We are two games in to uh, our match here. Utah Valley winning the first game easily. Second set uh, was a completely different story where the Huskies came out and took it to Utah Valley. Uh, 17 to 25 in that second set, whereas uh, UV beat them 15 or 25-15 in the first. So starting uh, the third set here, it's gonna be anybody's match at this point. Getting a look there at the Green Man group. Yeah, and in that, in that last set, Houston Baptist was siding out at 76%, and Utah Valley was siding out at 51%. Wow. So I don't, so side out percentage means when the other team, when the opposing team is serving at our team, how often we score off of their serve. So 73%. Yeah, so that's a, that's a big difference there. We're gonna get a quick look here at some of the highlights from the earlier action in tonight's match. This is set one where Utah Valley came out and just took it to the Huskies. We got a look there from uh, we got a look there from the freshman Lauren, uh, the middle blocker there, who uh, put on a show in that first set. Erica Nish, Nish, who we mentioned, uh, moved to the right side, had a very nice first set, and there she is again. And Brooklyn Hall uh, divvying up those sets very well and moving those sets around and, and keeping the, the Huskies block uh, very off balance. Yeah, and in set two, HBU, you know, they just kind of 
served a lot at Utah Valley and they couldn't really side out. And yeah, so Utah Valley, they need to kind of get their feet back under them. It was a, a different story in that second set. It was all HBU. And that'll happen in volleyball. When it's rally scoring, it's really, really tough to hang on to that momentum all the time. And it's it's tough to serve aggressively because you serve it out or into the net, and that's a point for the other team. But they've got to figure that out and walk that tightrope. And uh, well, we'll begin here in just a moment. Don't go away. We'll be right back with set number three here at Utah Valley. I'm Sylvia Bentley, an anthropology student at UVU studying ancient Peru, and this is my classroom. At UVU, I'm graduating with a diploma and a resume. Dawn is breaking at Utah Valley University. 33,000 students are descending on campus. What are they after? Knowledge? Opportunity? They might be pursuing an MBA, an automotive certificate, or a bachelor's degree in philosophy. But despite their different paths, they share a common understanding. Welcome back to the PE building here at Utah Valley, where the Wolverines are taking on the Huskies from Houston Baptist. It was all Utah Valley, then it was all Houston Baptist, and here we are, basically, the slate has been wiped clean, and instead of three out of five, we're playing a two out of three match now. From here on out, anyway. Nicely done by Kevani, nicely done for Katie to recognize what she could do with the ball and Kalani to recognize what she could do right after that. That almost seemed like it was up for grabs and then Kalani was just like, yeah, I'm done with this, so I'm just gonna <laughs> put it away. Nice serve there from Brooklyn down the line. Eric Nish a little bit early, got underneath that set and uh, Spatched that thing clear out of bounds. You can see by her body language, she's a little, little frustrated by that swing, but uh, sometimes you gotta have a pretty short memory in this game and move on to the next ball. Wow, nice turn there. High off the hands, ooh, bit of a lift, but not called. Nicely controlled by Utah Valley. And that's sprayed wide, or well oh, out of bounds. Out. I think <laughs> Patty wanted that, but it went straight overhead. Yeah. And it looks like Sam will keep Bailey in the match for Lindsay, actually. Instead of last, ma last set, Bailey came in for Kehlani, and now Bailey is in for Lindsay. Going at the libero for the Huskies, it passed very well. I guess that ball was up, and yeah, Simmons she uh, Scott wanted them to continue she short, playing. Yeah, she short hopped that. That was that was not uh, that ball was not up in the air, but uh, both coaches sure wanted it to be. Oh, oh play! Oh, it has nice. to go over. It has to go over. No, that's four. Yep, she didn't jump. 
So it's not considered a block, right, when the player is standing on the ground and just puts her hands up? Well, the, the issue is, is Bur Brooklyn is back row right now, and she's standing in front of the 10-foot line. And that she cannot block. She, she cannot jump and block uh, when she's back row. So she just stood there, used her go-go gadget arms. And oh, so it. it's not considered a block if she pops it up the way she did. Yeah. I gotcha. I gotcha. So. Struggling early with a couple Yeah, Utah Valley just not in system right now at all. Just not firing on all cylinders, that is for sure. Well, Kehlani needs to make a move for that ball. She just kind of watched it go by her. And, you know, she's athletic. She can move around pretty fast. That's a ball she can pick up. Yeah, they just look kind of lackadaisical right now. Uh -oh. I don't know. Oh, boy. And that's a quick seventh point. Utah Valley called out of rotation. Uh, Not something you see a whole lot at this level. And that's enough for Sam. Yeah. They jump out to a five-point lead, 7-2. to two. Sam Otoa has seen enough. And it's time the beatings will now commence. So we will be back in a moment and uh, carry on in this third set. Huskies up seven to two. Hi, I'm UVU. And I'm another university. Here you go, UVU. Oh, thanks, AU. You're a university now, and I know how stressful that can be. So I figure you need one of these babies. Great. <laughs> what is this exactly? It's a stress monitor. I use them all the time. Let me show you. Hook it up like this, and it measures your stress level so you know when to take a break. After all, you just became a university. And we have the lowest university tuition fees in the state. The lowest in the state? Mm -hmm. And UVU has an average class size of 30 students to yes. one teacher. Hey, you calm down. I mean, this is a good thing. Now everyone will want to go to UVU. Hey, <laughs> you? Are you all right? Maybe I should go to UVU. <coughs> Welcome back to the PE building here at Utah Valley University. Utah Valley down two to seven in this third set. Oh, and she got a little anxious on that one. That ball was definitely gonna be on the plane, but she reached over a little too soon. Huskies called for a over violation. And you know, I thought Kevin kind of gave that one to Utah Valley. I think uh, HBU player was in an okay spot. But you know, that's all right, because HBU just got the side out. With... There's the justice call right there. Yeah. When, the, <laughs> when a call doesn't go your way and the other team serves in the net, uh, justice. Nice high swing off the top of the block. Good side out. Let's see if Utah Valley can continue. Put some pressure with Erica. Yeah, it'd, be, it'd be fun to see both these teams show up at the same time <laughs> during the same set. Right, yeah. Seems like when one's playing well, the other one uh, is not. Oh. Wow. Nice up. You know, that's unfortunate. That's like the third time Victoria has done that against Utah Valley. And it just keeps uh, being open. It keeps working. Yeah. It's just... And Allie White is in for Erica Nish in the back row. Allie White is a freshman setter from, originally from Utah, moved to North Carolina in high school. Very smart swing off the block and out of bounds. Oh, it looks like uh, HBU gets the point. I don't know what happened there. I missed that one too. I don't know. Maybe it caught the antenna or something on the way out of bounds. That was weird. Yeah. Bailey getting pulled for Lindsay. It looked like a nice swing off the block and out of bounds, but uh, for some reason. Oh. Oh wow! Look at her go up go, and get go that ball. Go gadget arms. Yeah, the, clearly the Huskies are not going to give this match to UV, so they got to take it if they want it. And Allie getting a swing on that rally. I bet she's really excited about that. Yeah, Utah Valley <laughs> showing some signs of life here a little bit. 
Still trailing five though. Right now the Huskies up 10 to five. Wolverines fighting just to stick around here in this third set. Nice control play by Utah Valley. Wow. Hey. Wow. All right. Let's see Look if Utah at Patty Valley. just absorb that swing. Let's see if Utah Valley can get some heat going now. Get some more points. Dude, Patty just stood in there and took a bomb. Yeah, she just and passed a dime too. That was a great play by her. Yeah, that was a sweet hit by number 11 on HBU. It really was. Oh. Allie is doing so, she's such a smart player for Utah Valley. Oh, shoot. Kehlani in between on that one. Didn't know if it was in or out and got to decide a little faster than that. <laughs> the ball's gonna decide for you. 11 to six. Heather serving for HBU. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Everything going uh, Houston Baptist way so far in this third. And you know, I hate to say it, but like, like what you said earlier, you know, being the, having a, pardon me, those freshman mistakes, they add up, you know, all of a sudden, do. it could have been 7-11. It's a two-point swing, now it's 6-12. Well, on her swing even, she waited a little too long and hit that ball really low instead of at the, at the top of her reach when she probably would have gone over the block and straight down. Yeah. And it looks like HBU is just abusing the block right now. Yeah. And, you, you know, Sam is just looking for anything to get some energy going. And Jeremy Barney is subbed in for Lauren Stringham. Yeah, looking for some signs of life from anybody, anyone to give him a spark here. And look at that libero. She just camped out. They've definitely, they've scouted Brooklyn, and they know that she loves to dump to that spot because that libero yeah, is she, just camped there. She's been all over the last couple times Brooklyn has tried that. Yeah, she's got to she's got to go somewhere else. As, as uncomfortable as it might be for her, she's got to find another spot to put that ball. Oh shoot! You know, it's just those little plays, those little miscommunication plays like that. That you know, two uh, two miscommunication plays can add up to a whole lot of points. And it, and it also kind of adds up to the fact that nobody really wants to be the one to step up and, and, and you know, and be the one. And mm -hmm. they're all just kind of looking to someone else to, to start that, uh, that spark. And, and you can't play that way. It's almost like playing not to lose. And, and Sam is, is well aware of it. The scoreboard is well aware of it. 15 to seven in the third. The Huskies looking to go up 2-1 in this third set. So remember, to find out more about your UVU women's volleyball team, head on over to wolverinegreen.com. There you can find team stats, photos, and complete season schedule. And the complete season schedule. The cheerleaders doing their work to get the crowd rowdied up, seeing if they can get Utah Valley to get some energy on the floor. Yeah, they gotta do something. They gotta. They gotta spark this crowd, and that's one thing. When you're playing at home, you really gotta use that home crowd to really pump your team up. And I know whenever we played at home, and we had friends and, and girls that we knew and we liked watching <laughs> us, <laughs> that was enough for me. Yeah, it was a little, uh, little extra motivation. Oh, yeah. So to talk a little bit more about Lori, again, remember this uh, this match is dedicated to Lori Richards and the pink for a purpose. We talked about the proceeds of this match going to the Lori Richards Memorial Scholarship Fund. Lori, again, was a professor for 30 years at UVU in community health and elementary ed. She was a member of the UVU Hall of Fame, the Utah Coaches Hall of Fame, and the NJCAA Hall of Fame and again, passed away this last February. 
uh, from her second battle with breast cancer. Yeah, and that was that was a huge. I mean, I can remember it because she went to the hospital. Another block. And you know that second time she went in, you know the Richards were pretty sure that was it for her. And you know it's a bummer to watch it happen, but it was sure nice for everyone to be able to say their goodbyes while she was in the hospital. Yeah. The community came together, that's for sure. Nice swing out of the middle from Katie. Yeah, UV is, is going to need a lot of that right now. They've got to, I mean, early on in this match, they put the pressure on the Huskies with some very tough serving. And even though they're being, they're doubled up right now, 8 to 16, they have got to figure out a way to get more confident at that service line and really put some heat on those serves. Nice job there by Brooklyn, seeing that tip, but knowing it was out of bounds and laying off it. Yeah, she was all over that, and so her serve is kind of just erupting Houston Baptist. You know, they just keep playing this deep game, and you know, I, I don't think Utah Valley is used to that, the deep game, you know, yeah. like hitting, hitting shots. Well, and, they, and, and it was actually benefiting UV early because that deep game yeah. was going out by, yeah. you know, a foot every time, and now they've kind of got it dialed in, and, and you're right, UV is struggling with it. Yeah, it's just, you know, one small adjustment. I think they could have picked up two or three balls, just putting a defender maybe a little deeper yeah. by like seven or eight inches. I talked about UV needing someone to step up, and this this was Brooklyn's third serve, putting some serious heat on them. Yeah, this is just a battle right now. Both teams just rallying. There it is. Erica Nish getting it done on the right side. And that was it. It was almost like the Huskies could feel that UV was starting to gain momentum, and they really battled for that last ball. But UV coming away with it, scoring their third in a row. Down 11 16. Yeah, and like I said, uh, I was telling Steve earlier that Utah Valley, the last two times, the last time these two teams met, they were down about what they're down right now 16 11, 17 11, and Utah Valley was able to come back and get a win. So let's see if this ty that type of momentum can and be. You, you know how volleyball <laughs> players are. You know both teams are thinking about that right now. Yeah. UV's thinking, hey, <laughs> yeah. we've done this before, yeah. and they're excited about it. And, and the Huskies are sitting there going, oh, man, they've done this before. We can't let them back in. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I don't think Trent will allow that to happen again. He's a pretty bright fellow, he seems like, the head coach for HBU. Another pass, getting them out of system. However, able to score their 18th point. Nice swing there on the outside from and Jasmine you, Casey. And Erica, again, was in a really good spot. She just needs to get her hands over the net. Wow. And Katie getting Huge. up and bombing. Uh, she's going that, back. Was that like a one and a half? That was like a, a delayed one, and she just got up and spanked that ball. That was a nice swing. Yeah, let's see if that could carry over into a serve for this there momentum. You go. Another freebie for UV. And they pull it off. And just, and just like that, a three-point swing with a, a miss serve, a side out, or I don't know, miss serve. And but yeah, no, all of a sudden this looks like a completely different game. Only down four now and another tough serve. <laughs> and that is unfortunate. I think Katie probably should have saw that a little sooner. Yeah, Seemed like she got kind of caught up on her heels. That was some smart offense there by Esther Longoria. Yeah. Bailing her set her out. Tough ball off the tape. UV just trying to keep it in play. And Jeremy Barney still in for Utah Valley. Wow. <laughs> Lindsay Morrell, is it Morrell? Lindsay Whoa, Morrell, beautiful yeah. swing yeah. on the outside. 15 and 19, this is really anybody's ball game still. And especially, I don't know what it is, something got into UV and they're starting to serve tough again. Oh, but the Huskies are bailed out. Jeremy with the net call, she says she didn't net, but 
<laughs> I think it might have been Brooklyn. I'm watching her kind of talk to Jeremy about it. Yeah, she's like, you're right, you did it. <laughs> now just be quiet. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I kind of did it. <laughs> and don't make eye contact with Sam right now. <laughs> yes. Oh, tough set. Oh, look at that smart play into the corner. Oh, she was on the line, but yep, he saw it too. But she was below the net, so now I don't understand. She was below the net, but she swung at it. She did jump a little bit, but she was still below the net. So yeah, that's probably a judgment call. That's a weird call. Kevin yeah. Willett, the up ref, uh, oh. ref in a long time. Oh, that's not going to help their cause at all. They got to communicate on that. Yeah. It's the hubby wife right there. No communication. It goes right between the two of them. Outsides can't allow that to happen. No. And that's what I mean. They both have got to be aggressive. If anything, knock each other over going after that ball, but don't just let it go. Utah Valley struggling offensively right now with a pass. Yeah, as quickly as, uh, as quickly as the Wolverines were able to get that momentum and score a couple of quick points, it's gone right back to the side of the net now, and it's all the Huskies. Nice swing. Jeremy trying to provide some spark for Utah Valley. Yeah, once again, running out of room here. Utah Valley down a bunch, 16 to 23. Yeah, it's a bunch. Wow, nice up. And Brooklyn, nicely done to run it down. Once again, the Huskies earning a reel. Yeah, and HPU is just doing such a good job right now. Wonder what kind of tricks Sam will have in store for the next set. Nice pass. Wow, big swing down the line. Wolverines not ready to go to game four just yet. And now they're ready. Yeah, now game four. Yeah, that ball served long, trying to put a little too much on it. Huskies take game three, 25-17. We'll be right back with game four. Don't go away, more volleyball coming up. Dr. John is a real UVU professor, not an actor. So to tell his story, we hired a UVU student. Knowledge-based edification increases executive functioning in the frontal lobes. Yo, dude, UVU is more than an education. It's a life experience. UVU facilitates the discovery of your personal Weltanschauung. What? Dude, you don't know everything yet. Utah Valley University. It's your university. I'm Sylvia Bentley, an anthropology student at UVU studying ancient Peru, and this is my classroom. At UVU, I'm graduating with a diploma and a resume. Costa Vida, the coastal life. What do we love about it? The extreme, the unexpected, the original. The results are delicious, like the new sweet Baja shrimp tacos at Costa Vida. They're gnarly, fully loaded with honey shrimp and mango salsa. And with cilantro, lime, rice, and beans, it's a full-on meal. So go big, get fresh. Escape to Costa Vida.
building here on the campus of Utah Valley University. Utah Valley jumped up quick, winning that first set easily, handily, shellacking the Huskies, and something happened in the, uh, in the interim, and the Huskies came back in game two and in game three with some fire in their belly and, and really took it to UV both sets. So here we are in the fourth, and at this point, UV needs to win or go home. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see who Sam starts. He pulled Lauren Stringham last set, the starting middle. Looks like she's going to be back in, and Kehlani and Lindsay. So Bailey will stay out, the other outside that was subbed, and we'll see if Utah Valley can get some momentum going in this fourth set. Yeah, at this point, uh, you know, it's it's almost like sometimes you watch a team in, in football when they get up a little bit and it's t towards the end of the game and they start to play not to lose rather than doing the aggressive stuff that got them up there in the first place. In that first set, man, UV just came out on fire. They were serving tough. Their offense was dialed in. They were blocking balls. They were making plays. And then in the second and third, they just kind of, I don't think, I think they were waiting for the Huskies to give it to them. And, and the Huskies woke up and said, uh, no, we can't play some ball tonight. So we'll see who shows up in the fourth. I'm kind of curious myself. So looks like the Huskies are going to get the uh, the serve. Yeah, and Utah Valley is going to want this win for their conference seating. They don't want to go to their conference championship playing, you know, right? You know, not Chicago State or. Yeah, they sw they flip flopped on the hitting percentage in that set. Uh, UV only hitting 150, and uh, the Huskies hitting 262. Had yeah, an awesome move by Brooklyn to get it to the middle. And I really like that. You mentioned before, you've got to establish that middle early. And Brooklyn doing a nice job forcing that ball to Katie, who also does a nice job herself by finding the hardwood. Erica doing a nice job. I'd like to see her set that block a little bit further toward the pin and really take that away from the outside hitter. Yeah. Back to serve, number six for Houston, Haley Hoffman. Once again, Utah Valley out of system. <laughs> Dodging a bullet there. You know, those, those are shots I think that Lindsay has been working on a lot in practice, being able to take a set that's not great and able to and roll it on the tape yeah. like that just <laughs> far enough so it's out of reach of the defensive player. Man, that's gutsy. That takes a lot of character by her. <laughs> I've been trying to work on that shot my whole life. That's a tough one. Oh, you've had it your whole life, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, man. There it is. Brooklyn. See, mixing it up a little. She's camped in the middle waiting for that typical dump, and that way yeah. that's a smart play there by Brooklyn. Yeah, Brooklyn realizing it, knowing that, that where that libero is going to be. Yeah, that's awesome. See, now she's second-guessing where she should set up. So that's a smart play by Brooklyn. That, however, was, was not <laughs> yeah. the best serve in the world, Yeah. giving it right back to the Huskies. Nice high deep swing. Got a little wood on that swing. That was a pretty nice swing from where she was and making a nice defensive play. Oh man, these rallies, they just are fierce. It's a battle out here. They just keep going back and forth. Big block there from the Wolverines. And that, oh man, that ball was going way out of bounds. I didn't see a touch on the block, but maybe, uh, maybe the defense did. <laughs> she like set that yeah. straight down. Wow, nice turn. And look, I think Trent might have said something to Victoria about what I said earlier about Victoria lining up her oh, really? block. Yeah, because she kind of looked at you. I know. She looked over. She looked over at Trent and was like, "Oh, I'm gonna get that next time." Face. You didn't see that guy that he sent. He's been sitting right behind you ever since you started telling <laughs> him stuff, and now he's he's talking taking it back to the coach. <laughs> talking about the wrong team. <laughs> Powering that through the UV block. Looked like Brooklyn was in the right spot. Just kind of had some noodle arms there and unable to contain that. Yeah, it went off her hand. That's a nice swing. Nice tool out of bounds. Ooh, <laughs> huge play. Nice dig by Patty. 
You could almost hear Brooklyn catch her breath, praying that was gonna be inbounds, and that was just a, a nice dump there. She really didn't have another option on that pass. Yeah, using a fist, not really, you can't really control the ball, but at least it went over and in. Utah Valley clinging to a one-point lead. Nice swing across her body to the corner. Yeah, and I think that's a ball that Allie could have dug with that sub that Sam made last set. He's not making it now, letting Erica provide some offense yeah. for Utah Valley with that back row set. I've been noticing, though, if Brooklyn doesn't put that ball right where Erica wants it, she's not super mobile to get uh, to adjust to it. Wow, nice swing. Nice move by Patty to go right to it. Oh, way to recognize where Katie was. Yeah, Houston Baptist is doing an amazing job defensively right now. Oh, Brooklyn. She thinks dump almost before she thinks setting, it seems like a lot of times. Like she's almost looking to dump more than looking for her, her teammates. And she's gone to the well a couple too many times in yeah. this set. And you know, I'm sure that was an HBU scouting report with his Brooklyn's oh, activity sure. on the net and how much. You know, Kaboom from Kaylani on the outside. A nice hard swing. Right through the big seam on that block. Knotted up at sixes. For those of you who have recently joined us again, this is one and two in the conference. Utah Valley coming in at number one. And the Huskies looking for the upset. Up two games to one and leading 7-6 in the fourth. Yeah, wow, with, the nice way, serve. with the way they've been playing, it might happen unless Utah Valley can get a little more consistency with their ball control. Yeah, if they can start to, to run their offense like that and really start to kind of spark a little bit and, and get some excitement and some momentum on their side, I think it'll carry, but they seem to just kind of come on and off, on and off with their consistency, and it's and, and their, the score's been showing that. Wow, nice pickup. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Look at that. You know, those are the wow. type of plays Utah Valley needs to win if they want to win this set. It's almost like an open net, and they all just stand back to play defense. And <laughs> it's okay, my turn. I got her this time. A couple of really nice digs there by the Wolverines. Came on, you back Tough to serve. serve. Yeah. Getting Houston right out of the system. You know, forcing that error. I like that. I like that Heather uh, Leverton there was, was not just trying to put it to somebody, but actually trying to hit it to a spot where there was no defense. And, you know, unfortunately, there was no defense there, but it was also out of bounds. <laughs> oh, look at that. Utah Valley in a nice little run, 10-7. See if they can keep this momentum going. This is so big. This is one of Sam's keys, was just putting a lot of pressure on the server C for the Huskies. And that's what won that first game. And, and now they, uh, they bumped up a little bit to a 10-7 lead. So we're going to step aside for a moment while the coaches talk about it. We'll be back in just a moment with more volleyball right after this. Coastal life. What do we love about it? The extreme, the unexpected, the original. The results are delicious, like the new sweet Baja shrimp tacos at Costa Vida. They're gnarly, fully loaded with honey shrimp and mango salsa. And with cilantro, lime, rice, and beans, it's a full on meal. So go big, get fresh. Escape to Costa Vida. the PE building here on the campus of Utah Valley University. Kehlani back to serve. Utah Valley leading 10 to seven here in the fourth set, trailing two games to one. Another missed opportunity there from the server C for the Huskies. UV getting another freebie. 
<laughs> hey, waiting. Good, good job by, wow, excuse me, kudos by Katie to sneak that ball in there. That set was not the greatest, but she was able to yeah. make it work. There's that tape shot again they've been working on. Yeah. Nice job. UV getting an opportunity and able to convert. Widening their lead just a bit. Man, going after the libero, and she is struggling. Yeah, Kehlani is just doing such a good job on that serve right now. Just I don't know if she thinks her setter's hiding somewhere in that third row over there, but she's passed three balls in a row into the cheap seats. And the coach apparently saw that too, and out she goes. Well, you know, that's what was uh, one of Sam's strategies. Sam and Scott, the assistant coach for Sam Matola, his, their strategy was to serve to libero, you know, put the pressure on the libero, and it's exactly what they did, and out she goes. And Erica didn't know who to serve at that point, so she just served out of bounds. Yeah. She could at least try to serve her on the bench to, you know, make a point or something. <laughs> Having a substitution here from the Huskies, trying to uh, make get, a few changes, get a different look. Yeah, get this little barrel back in to serve. And also into the match comes uh, Katie Wenger, the middle blocker, junior. We talked a little bit about her in the pregame. Oh, nice chuck by Brooklyn. Wow. But Bailey Keith with HBU able to just deny Lindsay. Yeah, that was a nice block there. Nowhere to go. Yes. The Huskies getting a break there. That ball trickles off the net. Just enough to uh, mess with the serve receive. Getting another point there, 10 to 12 now, trying to claw their way back into this fourth set. Wow, how in the world did that set come out clean? Yeah. Oh, and that was going to go long, too. Yeah, it did look like it was going to go long, but Kenna, she's quick like a cat. She's just able to get a paw up there. And yeah, it was a nice job getting her hands up. Just unfortunately, I think that was, uh, there's no top spin on that swing. I think that was going to be well out of bounds. Trailing by only one now. UV needs a quick side out. And you know it's unfortunate because it's the libero that starts serving when Erica stopped. What was it like, 12 to eight, 12 to nine? Now it's 12, 12, just yeah, like that. that ball just off the antenna, then the block. Tell Valley needs to take care of this volleyball and side out off of this first serve. Yeah, they've dropped four straight now. Oh, look at that, oh, boy. Sam will not be happy about that. Lots of room over there in that corner. Libero doing a nice job to find it. The uncontested ace. And now they lead by one. Nice pass there. And Katie sprays that one wide. I'm sure, yeah, Sam here is going to want to slow things down if he can. You know, it's like deja vu, except for HBU is in the driver's seat this time, and Utah Valley is uh, getting a beat on. Yeah, for reals. They, uh, the Huskies just kind of came on there, made a couple of substitutions, and got the libero back there serving, and she's got a wicked little floater that uh, has wreaked havoc. So you mentioned earlier that Utah Valley was on a pretty nice win streak here at home. Yeah, they've won their last six matches in a row, and they haven't lost at home since September 3rd of last year. 16 matches, you know, that could this could be their first loss. Hopefully not. Um, and also, Utah Valley is going to host the Great West Conference Tournament in November 16th and 17th. Yeah, that uh, Utah Valley's got some work to do here tonight to stay in this, They even to push it to a fifth game. So we mentioned uh, a couple times about uh, tonight's match being uh, and, and the whole purpose of tonight's match is to uh, remember Lori Richards, who unfortunately passed away early this year with her second bout with uh, breast cancer. The proceeds from this match going to her uh, memorial fund and her scholarship. And so uh, very nice gesture there by the school to keep her memory alive 
and, and hopefully alive forever because she touched a lot of lives uh, during her, uh, her tenure here at uh, Utah Valley. We mentioned her, there was like four different names of the school that uh, while she was involved and uh, kind of helped the school to grow up over the years and, and definitely the community, the volleyball community uh, would look a lot different uh, without her presence. So yeah, her, uh, her influence will be felt for a very long time in this valley. Back to the match, Utah Valley down by one, 13-14. Make that 13-15. Hussey's going to do their best to close it out here in this fourth game. That was a great shot by yeah, number nice 10. Turn. Yeah, that was awesome. Jasmine. Miscommunication once again. Wow. Just like you said earlier, the, what was it, the husband? The, the hubby wife. The yeah, hubby husband wife, and wife. Yeah. No <laughs> communication. Yeah, that's... Uh, you know, it's, sometimes that's frowned upon to say that out loud, you know, because no one wants to talk about that. But uh, it's an unfortunate reality. Wow, big swing from Erica Nish. You know, this is uh, Utah Valley's match to win or lose. I, I honestly think if they're playing at their potential and putting the pressure that they can on this server receive team, they, uh, they can walk away with a win here. But, you know, they're, the Huskies are definitely not going to give it to them. they got to take it from them. Yeah, and there's that another another deep spike by HBU. They've been doing that all night, just deep corners, and it's been working well for them, going high off the block instead of right into it. Yeah, Jasmine Casey's getting it done. She has had a, a nice night tonight. All right, Kevani with a huge swing from the back row. They got Patty back in, so hopefully this will add to some defense in the back row, a little less communication errors, hopefully. I believe number 10, uh, Jasmine Casey, is leading in the kills category for both teams tonight. That was either her 14th or 15th kill on the night. Wow, big swing and a nice dig. Hi. I'm sure Lauren wishes she had put a little bit more on that last swing. <laughs> yeah. awesome. Boom! And you know, it's, it's this is some great volleyball that's being played by both teams. You know, granted, great it's the Great West Conference, and they get a bad rep by the NCAA because you know they're not considered a I'm not sure a, a, a sport uh, or a conference that gets an automatic bid to any championships. But both teams playing at a very high level right now. Yeah, they are. Nice way to hang up there. UVU block, taking care of it, keeping that ball alive. Oh, nice job by Lauren. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Brooklyn. Brooklyn's got some pretty big hitters on the front row right now. And couldn't get it done the first swing, went after the second one and found the middle of the net. Down 16-18. Oh, I don't think anyone touched that one. Yeah, Sam's going to be looking to do something right quick. I mean, yeah, another timeout here from Sam Atoa trying to slow down the freight train that is Houston Baptist. Some nice volleyball here by the Huskies. So, UVU watchers out there, are you a member of the mall yet? If not, check out the Mighty Athletic Wolverine League where you can get great discounts on all things sports related and more at UVU Mall. That's M-A-W-L, UVU Mall. Utah Valley, they've dug themselves a little bit of a hole here in this fourth set. Got to figure something out, make a change. Either in their attitude or in their lineup, but one way or another, they've got to find a way to get those three points back to get yeah. a W and push this to a fifth set. And, you know, this is one aspect of the game I think that Utah Valley can, you know, improve on is just being able to fight out tough situations, you know, able to still move on to the next point what, with whatever happened from the last point. Don't let too much emotion carry over, but don't let any too much drop. Keeping a good consistency 
you know, yeah, always, this. always building up rather than, you know, making errors or hitting out of bounds. Or yeah, it's so easy to get down on yourself if you make one or two errors in a row. I mentioned before, sometimes you got to have a real short memory in this game. And folk, ooh, not a cleanly set ball, but clean hey. enough. Yeah. Just trying to give her hitter a little top spin to help her out a little. Yeah, Utah Valley needs to make some noise really fast if yeah. they want to push this to a fifth set. Yeah, they're within two. They're definitely within striking distance. Pretty nice serve and a better pass. Wow, nice set. Oh, nice hustle by Patty. She did some good work, but. Yeah, not I don't know, the Huskies finish. are uh, they're firing on all cylinders right now. They look yeah, pretty they're, good. They're killing it. They've set themselves up. They're in a nice position right now, but again, no, Brooklyn, that's, that, over and over and over. Very predictable. She needs to go back to the first set where she was getting everybody kills. Okay, Utah Valley with a freebie here, but no, a nice, oh, yeah. nice placement on that third you gotta contact. Gotta control those free balls. Wow. Oh, Katie with a huge block, but who is that? Number 12, Heather, able to dig herself out of that. Whew, All right. <laughs> the crowd with a collective sigh of relief after that long rally. And Utah Valley able to stay within two. Showing some character there and hanging with that long, long rally. Brooklyn back to serve. She's got a pretty nice floater when it's working. That one handled pretty well. Ooh. She's had a pretty nice match yeah, that tonight. That was a really good swing. She's been doing. She's been doing excellent. Heather has just been on fire. That was her 13th or 14th kill herself. So she's she's up there with her teammate. And she's getting digs. Oh. <laughs> a little disappointed her teammates didn't pick it up, but yep. uh, when you got a nice comforting lead, 1921, I think that's all right. UV's got arguably one of their best servers back there right now. It's just a matter of finding the right person and getting a lot of movement on this floater. Oh, perfect pass. Jeez. <laughs> so what do you barrel. do? Yeah, serving <laughs> the barrel that time, not such a great strategy. They were oh, able to execute. That, serve. that was yeah. a beautiful pass. And she's up early, able to just turn that. Madeline yeah. just cranking it. And she's the one that did so much damage before. UVU dodging a bullet there as she serves that one long. All right, so if Utah Valley wants to make some noise, they got to pull some points right away. I've been saying that almost all match, but they haven't been doing it. Yeah, they got to figure something out here real quick. Manufacture a couple of points. Right. <laughs> Smart play. Not sure if she should go after it or not. Decided what the heck, let's do it. And yeah. gets away with it. UV, UV pulling within one here, very late in this fourth set. Yeah. Again, and Kehlani is just, she keeps sucking in. She's got to stay back. Yeah. She'll gobble that up all night. And you know, um, Houston Baptist is doing a really good job with the middle. Katie comes in so early. It's not getting, a, Lawrence just not getting there fast enough with the block. It almost needs, she almost needs to commit to get some touches on it. Up and over the block. Yeah. Down the line, unable to retrieve that is Kehlani. And it's now match point for the Huskies. Yeah, I'm sure Sam Matola still has enough confidence in his team to finish this. And they can finish it. They just need to, you know, control this volleyball. Oh, kind of what it is. a lot better than that. Yeah, we got to finish that. Wow, what a stab there. HBU <laughs> wins at Utah Valley. And they Huge. do it. They get the upset. Number two defeats number one at home.
A disappointing loss for the Wolverines. They hung in there. They just could not get it together and stay in system. Well, we're going to step aside for a moment. We'll be joined when we get back with Sam Atoa, head coach for the Wolverines. We'll be right back. Costa Vida, the coastal life. What do we love about it? The extreme, the unexpected, the original. The results are delicious, like the new sweet Baja shrimp tacos at Costa Vida. They're gnarly, fully loaded with honey shrimp and mango salsa. And with cilantro, lime, rice, and beans, it's a full-on meal. So go big, get fresh. Escape to Costa Vida. Hi, my name is Tony. I'm a student with UVU Automotive, and this is my classroom. At UVU, you can graduate with a diploma and a resume. life. What do we love about it? The extreme, the unexpected, the original. The results are delicious, like the new sweet Baja shrimp tacos at Costa Vida. They're gnarly, fully loaded with honey shrimp and mango salsa. And with cilantro, lime, rice, and beans, it's a full-on meal. So go big, get fresh. Escape to Costa Vida. Welcome back to the PE building here on the campus of Utah Valley, where the Wolverines were defeated in four against the number two uh, Huskies. Came into the building, UV took the first set rather easily, um, dropped the second and third, and were in a position in the fourth, but the Huskies were a little bit too much late in that set, and uh, they come away with the win. We're joined now by head coach Sam Atoa. Sam, Take us through the match a little bit. Tell me uh, your thoughts. Well, I guess, first of all, you got to hand it to uh, Houston Baptist. They came, they came to play. You know, I thought that we did an excellent job in that first set. And uh, the momentum was all on our side. Um, but they executed so much better than we did tonight. They controlled um, the serve. They controlled the serve and pass. I think uh, like what we talked about that we needed to do and as well as uh, what happened at the net. And so um, we didn't execute and, um, and, and they did. So it was just a disappointing night for us uh, that we just weren't the better team tonight. Yeah, it was an unfortunate loss, but yeah, again, they, they played well tonight. Uh, you guys played well, but just unable to get the win. So we were joined uh, during halftime by uh, Mike Jacobson. We talked a little bit about UV entering the WAC. So tell us your thoughts on that. You know, um, athletics and uh, uh, Mike has worked really hard to kind of get us to this point. And so we're, we can't be more excited uh, about the opportunity to be able to go to the WAC. I feel like that's a great fit for us. Uh, logistically also um, allows us to be able to have uh, play closer, uh, establish great rivalries with some teams that uh, are familiar to the area. And so I think that um, that move is going to be uh, a, a great move. Uh, I expect it to help us in our recruiting. I expect us to be able to help us to be able to be more competitive. And so I uh, can't be uh, uh, more thrilled at this point. Um, you know, I wish we had a better night tonight, but, um, you know, um, the WAC is going to be great for us. Yeah, I agree. It's an exciting time for the school. And Mike talked about you guys now being the biggest school in the state. Well, we're going to see a few, uh, a few highlights here from tonight's match. Tyler, take us through those. Yeah, so one thing that um, that 
I thought that we did very well was keeping the rally going, you know. Uh, I just felt like our transition game was really, really good. Um, but Houston Baptist was able to come out and just, like Sam said, just execute at, at you know, at a higher level. Yeah, they were scrappy. They, they, they kept balls. I thought we did an, a, an okay job, but they did a better job at keeping balls alive and kind of getting after balls. So, um, yeah, we were scrappy, but not enough. And uh, there's something that we just have got to, got to improve on, uh, especially when uh, we've got a lead or when you know, we're, we're behind. And so we've been in both situations where we've had leads and we've been able to take care of it or we've been behind. And so tonight we just, I got to take some of the blame as well, you know, and just not being able to, uh, uh, to, to prepare the kids uh, good enough for this match tonight. And so, but... Houston played well, and you can't take that away from them. Yeah, and to their credit, and we talked a little bit about it during the broadcast, it seemed like whenever you guys would start to establish the momentum and get a little bit of a run, two, three, four points, all of a sudden they'd battle back, and they would swipe it right back away from you, and then they would run for a while. And so, yeah, to their credit, they played uh, they played well tonight. You guys played well as well. It was a fun match to watch. I'm sure everybody at home really enjoyed it. And, again, we, uh, we talked about... Uh, dedicating this match to the memory of Lori Richards and to her scholarship fund. Uh, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Uh, signing off here from the campus of UVU, uh, Steve Vale, Tyler Whittison, and head coach Sam Atoa. As a healthcare leader, I rely on Utah Valley University graduates to help our company provide quality health care for the region. Many of the nurses graduating from UVU go on to work in our hospitals and clinics. They are superbly trained and are excellent employees who tend to stay in the area and remain employed with us for years. This is just one example of how UVU is serving the economic development needs of the region and the state. Stop by the campus to see for yourself. Utah Valley University, it's your university. Welcome to Utah Valley University, home to an educational philosophy that engages its students in hands-on, practical education. I invite you to learn more about one of Utah's largest, fastest growing, and most dynamic universities. Welcome back to the PE building on the campus of Utah Valley University. And, uh, thanks so much for, for joining us tonight. Um, we're going to wrap it up tonight for uh, Tyler Whittison. I'm Steve Vale, and uh, thanks for tuning in. We're shutting it down. <laughs> <laughs>